Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Well, speak of the devil. Night of the Ghouls is Ed Wood's sequel to his classic Bride of the Monster. You mean that place where the mad doctor made monsters? Taking place in a new spooky house out in the marshes, built on the remains of the old spooky house out in the marshes. Well, it brings back memories. Really? Did you see it in the cinema? Because you sure as hell weren't in the film. The old scientist control room used to be over here. I don't know what's weirder. The fact that he's remembering a house that he's never been in, or the fact that he's finding his way around a house by remembering... The one that was destroyed by lightning. It's a different house! The big question about this movie has to be, why make it a sequel? But I can't see where that's any of your affair. The story has nothing to do with Bride of the Monster. Oh, it was a nightmare of horror! Oh. The only way to connect them is to keep referring back to it every five minutes. So I figured these stories piling up about the old place since the doctor and his monsters were killed was just a figment of somebody's wild imagination. The old scientist and his monsters. Loba here served him well. He entered into a hall he did not remember from his previous visit there. We still have Tor Johnson's Lobo. Just turn to your right so we can see the makeup. Lovely. And of course, Patrolman Kelton, played by Paul Marco, who also appears in Plan 9 from Outer Space. Monsters, space people, mad doctors. They didn't teach me about such things in the police academy. Forming the films into a seamless and consistent trilogy, if you ignore everything except for Kelton. Why do I always get picked for these screwy details all the time? There's no monsters or mad scientists here. That's too bad. Just a turban-wearing medium. Perhaps I've been hasty in assailing you. But is he really contacting the dead, or is he just fleecing the bereaved? I am Dr. Acula, your host. Well, nothing suspicious about his name. What about the seance itself? <whistles> no, clearly this guy runs a slick operation. You can't blame people for falling for this. We tonight will bring him from that which was thought to be his final resting place. Fuck me, how long has this seance been going? It shouldn't take you too long. Frankly, next to Dr. Acula, you could almost call Sally Morgan legitimate. Over my dead body? As you'd expect from Wood, there's some willfully incompetent filmmaking technique. One could almost read his thoughts. It's only a metal railing. Huh. Yeah, probably this Dr. Ackler character has that railing rigged up too. Set dressing for a police station that includes little more than a photo of Wood himself on the wall. And Chriswell. I am Chriswell. Who provides voiceover and shows up at the end with a posse of ghosts. Good evening, Dr. Ackler. We have been expecting you. Who kicks shit out of the doctor. The acting is more horrifying than the story. You're not my actors. And the plot relies on the Doctor having a steady supply of actors who are the spitting image of his wealthy client's dead relatives. Even now, life is being restored to it through the scented candles, the spices, the oils. We've also got some potpourri that'll cure cancer. This is no time for silly jokes. And at one point, the action speeds up so it looks like a silent comedy. It's terrible. I don't think I'm going to like this. But it's Ed Wood. Gotta give him credit. He uses good material. He really doesn't. But if you can't laugh at a ghost playing a trumpet, then you need to re-examine your life. If you've got a film you'd like us to review, leave a comment below. Click here to subscribe here to watch more reviews, or if you'd like to watch the latest episode of Dark Corners Undead, click down there.